here it is, right? So going back to this, toxic shame plus abandonment issues. I'm not good enough. Parents not loving me off as a child is where it came from. Low self-esteem at the core. This gave me anxiety, okay? So how did, ma- how did anxiety uh, manifest itself? All right, so here's how anxiety happened to me. Okay. So step one is here, okay? Anxiety came in multiple forms, okay? Anxiety caused me to uh, fear cold approach, okay? I remember I used to work, I was like, um, how old was I? I was like 24 at the time. I was working at the 180 Grey Goose Lounge in Orlando, Florida. I remember there was this girl dancing, right? And she was just giving me the eyes. She was fucking eye graping me. Like just just violating me with her eyes, right? And you know what that is when women like look at you in the eyes, they're like, I want you to approach me. You look good. Please come dominate me, right? So this girl was like staring at me like eight times in a row. And like I was just too afraid. I got this tight, tight, tight feeling in my chest. And I just paralyzing fear, paralyzing fear. Why? Because I just felt that I wasn't good enough. I was not man enough. I was not alpha enough. I wasn't any of that stuff. Okay. So the fear of cold approach is how anxiety fucked me up and paralyzed me. And then when I didn't do the approach, what happened? Then comes, right? Then what happens? Then what comes? The toxic shame. Oh, you are a fucking beta. You fucking pussy. You didn't go talk to that girl. Well, guess what? You're a fucking loser. You're a fucking weak pussy ass beta male. You're not going to be as alpha as you want. How did? And I would sit there and beat myself up for like hours on end for not approaching some bitch that just wanted me to pipe her down. Okay? Tearing myself apart mentally. Okay. Second thing anxiety manifested itself in, right? Was pre mature ejaculation. Okay. Sometimes when I'd be fucking a girl, right? I would get so anxious, like, I have just got to, like, really do my best to please this girl. I have to make her orgasm. I have to make her feel amazing. I have to do all these things, right? I need to do this. Otherwise, I am not good enough. Going back to the toxic shame. What did this cause me to happen? It was an extreme, okay? So the premature actualization would be like this. I would get so, so, so excited, right, that I would quickly too quickly right like i'm talking like three pumps in boom i'm game or go limp like i'd like okay i gotta calm down gotta calm down gotta calm down and then my made the sound <laughs> you're like oh i swear i'm not gay i'm not uh, help me <laughs> just give me a second you know <laughs> You know, and then you're just sitting there like, ah, oh. and then what happens? You beat yourself up. Guess what? Guess what comes back in, right? The toxic shame. Oh, you fucking pussy. You're not alpha male. You can't fuck this girl till she goes to sleep. You know, you should be fucking her 30 minutes straight. No eye contact. Missionary only. Full alpha dominance, you know, and it's just like you're just you're just like constantly terrorizing yourself in your mind thinking like I have just, I've got to be perfect at all times. I need to be fucking the orgasm king or I'm not good enough. I'm bitch made. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, when you, when your dick goes limp, you're just like, uh Oh, <laughs> so, Christian Martin says, I feel like cold approach and public speaking, the same skill. They're not because I'm in a, I've always been an amazing public speaker. Always. But come nighttime club, 
walking up to a girl, dude, terrified, like fucking just like <laughs> paralyzed, bro. Paralyzed with fear. So, um, not cool, not cool. And then you beat yourself up, right? And you just continue that fucking path and just continue that pattern. Just beating yourself up. I'm not good enough. I'm not perfect. I did this. I did that. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, anxiety also manifested itself in this. So the anxiety manifested itself in abandonment issues. So we always make fun of girls like, oh, she has daddy issues. She's abandonment issues. She's a dumb ho, ha, 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 all these sluts, whatever, right? Because we're all fucking so cool in the manosphere. But this is manifesting the guys in this form right here. Always. Oops. This one's super fucking toxic and not really talked about. And even, manis even like red pill manosphere creators are like falling victim to this, right? But you always think... She is cheating or going to cheat, okay? And you could be in the most healthiest relationship ever and think the shit, okay? When I used to date Miss MLD, there was, I never forget, I was so fucked up in the head, man. It was so, I was just like, man, I had so many issues. God bless that girl for putting up with me. But I remember we went to go see Wonder Woman and like I was watching some bullshit toxic fucking red pill creator shit and I sat there and like accused her of cheating on me and dude this chick is a fucking saint she like lives at home with her parents doesn't do anything bad doesn't like go out drinking with dudes doesn't have guy friends texting her. Her Instagram is private. She has like 150 followers, like nothing, nothing. And I remember chastising her outside of the fucking movie theater before we went to see Wonder Woman. And she just, she just stood there and took it and cried and was just like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, you fucking liar, rah, red pill rage, right? That's why I'm like, got to really pump the brakes on this whole toxic fucking red pill manosphere shit. I got to beat the change that needs to happen here, right? I'm still restructuring things. It's coming, but, um, you know, it was so fucking toxic and so bad. And, like, this poor girl was, like, a victim of my fucked up issues. Me. I was the problem. It was 100% my fault. So, this was an ongoing pattern, too. There was another girl I dated, right? Her name was Ayame. And she, I was dating her in 2013, right? She was a sweet girl from fucking Gifu Prefecture, right? And she came over one time and she was late because she had to go to some like college fucking event or whatever. Because she like, at the time she was like 20, I was like 27 and she was in college. She was one of my students at the fucking English teaching school that I taught, like the, they're called Akaiwas and like adults go there to like pay to get English lessons, to go to group lessons and private lessons. And she, she knew what she was up to. She was fucking, she was fucking a, a little English teacher predator girl on me. She would be like a little teacher's pet and like always, you know, do her best to answer the questions correctly. And then after she'd be like, you want to come to my bar? I was like, yeah, because I know exactly what you're doing. And so um, I ended up hooking up with her, fucking her and dating her for like a couple months. Um, but one time she came over and I remember like, dude, it was like, I was like a demon possessed person, bro. Like this cloud of anxiety and this cloud of emotional turmoil comes over your eyes and we are at my place and I'm thinking like, you are absolutely, we're just cheating on me. And like, you were absolutely out with some guy and she was like, no relax, I'm going to show you some photos. I was just at this college event and they have timestamps on them. And I'm like a full-blown cycle, like, show me those fucking things. Ah! Right? Why? Why? Because. You guys don't donate Thank $100 you. right now. Donation? You're a beta male. You're a cuck. You're a blue pill for <clears> life. <throat> you better send me $1,000 in donation right now. <laughs> and, and Hassan Haji Mohammed with two euros says, but hypergamy, hypergamy is true. How can we equalize it? 
Just be the fucking man, bro. Dude, you guys think that, like, you have to be, like, super alpha all the fucking time to get a girl. Dude, you just got to be alpha enough to that girl and make sure that certain parameters are set up that she doesn't have a bunch of doorways to a bunch of dicks fucking coming at her, right? It's that simple. Like, you guys realize, like, and, and I'm tying into this, okay, because I think this is kind, kind of what you're saying. A lot of guys just think girls are, like, sitting at home, like, scheming, like, time to fucking find a better man. Time to fucking go and suck some dick, you know? Like, I'm just here. I'm ready to fucking go and find a new man. These girls aren't like that, bro. It's just super toxic to think like that. These girls aren't just, like, sitting around scheming, like, ready, like, okay, wake up. Like, gotta go fucking suck some dick. Gotta find some alpha dick today. You're projecting your masculine desire for variety of pussy on women. Women don't think like us, like we need sexual variety. Women just want the best, okay? So as long as you're the best option available to her emotionally, sexually, right? She feels safe with you. She doesn't worry about the money. This is why I tell you guys, money, muscles, game, frame. That's how you beat her pergamy. Look at the average dipshit out there. Go walk around. Look at the average fat fuck loser that you have to be better than. You're like, I can beat that guy. I, I can beat that guy. Think about it. 70% of the American population is overweight or obese. Just not be fat and you have a fucking 70% advantage over everybody. Stop living in fear, guys. And if a bitch is with you and you're on your grind and you're doing amazing and she's dumb enough to be texting other guys or to fucking cheat on you or to do some shit and you catch her, throw her ass out onto the streets where she belongs if she's not willing to change and find another woman. Because if you're focusing on the core four, money, muscles, game, frame, and you're compounding your efforts over the years, you're going to be unstoppable. It's that simple, guys. Stop living in fear. Empower yourself with truth and take action every single day to become the fucking man that you want to be. I did it today. Today, I went to bed last night like 4.30 in the morning, right? I woke up at like, I slept a lot. I woke up at like 11 and then I rolled back over and went to bed. I woke up at like 1.30 and I was like super charged up, right? My sister had been calling me. She needed a lot of help. I talked to Josh from the program as well. And I fired up my Keurig because I'm rich. <laughs> and I, I, I brewed a, a cup of coffee, right? Put on my headphones. My sister needed to talk to me, and I went for a walk with my dog. Walked my dog for like 30 minutes, and then I brought my dog back upstairs. She's in Maltese. 30 minutes, she's done, though. And then went back outside. I had my whole workout gear, and I walked around and walked around for three hours. Fasted walking training, three hours, while talking to my sister on the phone, getting my, you know, getting some stuff off of my chest, helping her with her shit, all while exercising at the same time. Came home, had to send some money to an attorney, paid her. Did a little bit of work, sent a couple emails, did a couple updates, and that's and that was my day. And now here I am, making advertisements, talking about the Inner Game Healing Summit, doing my show, and I'm gonna do this again tomorrow, and again Friday, and again Thursday, and again Saturday, Sunday, and I'm gonna keep going. 